Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I'm working on, what I got done, and what is coming up. So this week, uh, I painted another 11 models. Not a bad week. Uh, I finished off my two-player starter set for Bot War by painting the Atlanticans. Um, and then I also painted up some heroes, which you've seen this week, uh, to play in the Rougher Night at Red Rock. So four new little characters to survive this solo campaign for Dracula's America. And a new Warhammer Quest character, the Witch Hunter Wilhelm, will be joining the ranks of the, uh, the heroes, uh, as my buddy Chris is going to be coming back and doing some stuff. Uh, and of course, we have two battle level two heroes now in Warhammer Quest. So I need to paint up some new bad guys, so you'll see that stuff coming up too. Uh, and then I got a whole bunch of new Games Workshop bookshelf games to test out. I'm really stoked about these. Uh, one of the Space Marine Heroes, um, sorry, Space Marine Adventures series, uh, one of the Warhammer Age of Sigmar series, and Blitz Bowl. So we'll take a look at those as well right now. So here's the finished pile for this week. So first things first, um, my Dracula's America Rough Night at Red Rock crew. We got John Chance. I took all the names from the comments last week and just picked my favorite ones for each of the, the, the people. So this is my leader here, John Chance. Uh, just with a six shooter. Um, and yeah, he's a Black Scorpion resin mini, uh, painted up with a, just a variety of Citadel colors. His best friend Cornelius, also Black Scorpion resin mini. Um, again, to, to pretty much the same way, just a bunch of GW colors, base coated and washed. Uh, and then a couple artisan miniatures, this one's a, a North Star figure. You got Morgan, uh, who is the rival, so he's the, the younger rancher who we're having a land dispute with, I guess. And then Doc Wilford, he's my, my doctor ready to, to hang out and patch people back up and fight with his cleavers. <laughs> A lot of fun to paint. Um, I got to play through the three acts of uh, Rough Night at Red Rock. You saw the first one this week. And they'll be airing every two weeks until act three. It's um, it's a lot of fun and it was nice just to be able to paint some, like, just for funsies minis, you know what I mean? Like I love painting the cowboy models. I have a massive collection of cowboys at this point. Um, and these are just great add-ons to my collection. Uh, I was looking at all the new expansions for Dracula's America too, reading through the kin and the two other expansions. And I don't know, maybe, I'll, maybe we'll come back to it at some point if uh, someone wants to come play some more games. And here's my Atlantic in half of the uh, starter set for Bot War. There's the four combiners here. Um, they were all painted with, uh, well, everything here was painted with um, Citadel Contrast over a Gray Seer primer, and then painted um, and based with some texture paints uh, from Huge Minis and Army Painter Tufts. Uh, so there's the two Fly Guys. Uh, they're Moray and Stingray. Uh, and they were done with, I think, the Yandin Yellow, how it was just like a regular GW Sunburst Yellow. Um, and the jade green, and then all the black was done with uh, black templar, uh, and I used the uh, basilicam gray on the face there, and then the transparent um, gem green on the canopy, like the little plain canopy. Super fun to paint. I really like how much these pop. The Atlanticans are a lot more colorful than the Valiants I had were. Uh, just I just based them on the arts on the cards, so they they really pop off the bases, and I'm really happy with how like rich and saturated the colors. If you're gonna paint small stuff like this, this bot war stuff, um, contrast paint is perfect because it's really vibrant. You get that really rich saturated Saturday morning cartoon color, uh, and then um, and then it it helps to just like make all the flat surfaces and recesses and stuff pop too. Same process here using uh, Calador Sky, I think, and uh, Griff Charger Orange. Um, and then the, the same yellow. No, the darker yellow, Nazdreg? Whichever one the darker yellow is uh, on the guns and weapons and stuff. And then just highlighted, everything highlighted, and the base is done with um, Huge Minis Martian Turf, uh, and washed a bit of, um, just like the recesses and stuff, washed with a bit of Agrax Earth Shade to give it some some depth and tone. And then dry brushed with like a uh, orangey brown, bleh, bleh, Mornf no, not Mornfang. Doomable Gorthor Brown, maybe? I can't remember. One of the GW Browns, and then mixed in a little bit of uh, Screaming Skull for that final dry brush. And then two different types of Army Painter Tuft. Uh, some greens and some, I think it's Snow and Highland, I think are the two, or maybe Snow and Swamp. Uh, just to give a mixed like variety of turf. And I'm ready to play that game. And then last but not least, the classic Warhammer Quest Witch Hunter Wilhelm, uh, ready to go and hunt the witches. Burn the witches, don't have time to sew the stitches. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> just, I painted him in about the most boring, old school block painting color wash and then highlight way possible, but this is, they we're going for a 90s look here, so I did him exactly like he looks on the box. Uh, I used, uh, I think it's XV88 mixed with um, hmm, Xanary Dust for the leathers and stuff. Uh, and then some uh, uh, Doomble Brown, maybe. Not Doomble, that's the red one. 
whatever Scorch Brown is called now. <laughs> and then the cloak and stuff was done up in um, P3 Coal Black. I uh, used P3 Pig Iron and the weapons, uh, some whatever bronze is now from Citadel <laughs> on the bronze. It's hard. I have so many years of paint names in my head, it's very hard to parse which one's which anymore. Uh, and then the base was just done with a bit of uh, dried bark as just a, a paint over top of the um, the texture there, the sand, and then dry brushed with like a medium and a light gray. And that's it. All done. Coming up pile is pretty simple. So I stripped and uh, rebased and primed a whole bunch of that plastic stuff that Greg Collinson sent me. So big thanks to him, Greg from Party Foul. Um, this was his like childhood Warhammer Fantasy Battle Army, or like a portion of it, that I've salvaged and uh, just cleaned up, taken all the mold lines off of, uh, and then rebased on new bases. So it's exactly enough for uh, level two encounters uh, in Warhammer Quest. And I've got a variety, like I wanted to mix up and have some different models. So there's seven different Chaos Warriors because you get D6 plus one. Three are Battle Masters, one is War <laughs> Hero Quest, and then three are Warhammer. Just to have like a variety of like cool looking Chaos Warriors. Three are Battle Masters Ogres. Um, I wish I had like the pot bellied either Warhammer, uh, was it uh, Hero Quest or um, I can't remember what else. There was like a pot belly ogre plastic from something. Maybe it was Talisman. I wish I had the Talisman Ogre. The Talisman Ogre is amazing. Maybe I'll get them as like the boss of these guys. Well, these are perfect. I wanted to keep it all plastics just because like all the, the, the monsters I have now are plastics and I like how kind of like just different they are. There's a Talisman um, Chaos Roaster there and then eight Beastmen because you can have uh, D6 plus two Beastmen potentially show up. And they're actually Bestigore, so I'll paint them up in the same style as the rest of my uh, skirmish stuff for um, for fantasy. And I'll, I'll do my best to like give these guys different sort of like paint schemes and, and I won't just like bash paint them all so that the ogres, even though the three of the same model, they look a little bit different. And same with the chaos warriors and stuff too, just bang them up and give them different colored armor plates and things. Uh, but I'm stoked. So this is one, two, three different encounters to add some chaos to uh, our level two um, encounters for Warhammer Quest. And just change the challenge level a little bit. Like when ogres show up, you get three ogres. And that's a that's a lot of ogres to be fighting. And even chaos warriors, like they're not they're no slouches, man. This isn't orcs anymore. They're pretty terrifying. Same time as I'm waiting for my N4 stuff to show up and, and be able to play some N4, I built in or sorry, I just built in Prime to my um, my stuff I wanted to work on uh, in the meantime. So my uh, Pano half of uh, Operation No. Beyond Coldstorm. Yeah, Caldstorm. Beyond Caldstorm. Code Codestorm. <laughs> Code one. Beyond Caldstorm. So the Vargar, uh, the Locust, and the other guy. And then my two drones as well. I did one as a, um, I think it's Fugazi, the one with the, he's not Fugazi. The one with the combi rifle and and the uh, and Satlock. And then HMG one, which is a Sierra. And then I got my, uh, I'm stoked for Star Mata. So I painted up, uh, or just assembled a prime to my Delta Doctor. So I can have a Yud button, some, some basic healing in my, uh, my um, O12 as well, O12 slash Starmada. So it's my Pan O slash Winter 4 and O12 slash Starmada. I'll be focusing on the beginning uh, just to get sort of like into N4 and they're all topical and new and timely. So I'm pretty excited about it. And then we got three bookshelf games from Workshop. I'm super excited about these. This one I'll probably start doing first, Rise of the Orcs. It's a one to five co-op player game. Um, and you're basically tower defensing waves and waves and waves of orcs, which I'm pretty jazzed about. I'm pretty sure these are the Space Marine Hero Terminators. They might actually just be custom for this. Cause it looks like there's actually a Space Wolf, an Ultramarine, a Blood Angel, and a uh, salamander and a uh, imperial fist. And I'm not sure if they have, yeah, I think they actually have like the bits on them to make them different too. I'm jazzed, I'm gonna paint them all up eventually. I was actually thinking about painting them all as Death Watch too, because that'd be cool. Just have them all be Death Watch Marines. And like that kind of explains why there's five different chapters here fighting. I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna read. The, I'm gonna read whatever the, the Cole's notes are for the um, the background for this story, and then get these guys pants. So I give them a try. Uh, what's cool is Crypt Hunters actually have most of this painted already. I just need to paint these guys. And when I can give this a try, it's a two player game. Um, and it's like a dungeon adventure, which I'm pretty jazzed about. There's like a, a labyrinth building game for two players set in 10,000 tombs. And it's Oris Sure Sight and his Stormcast Eternals finding the Hishian Illuminator, an ancient relic. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about these. I, I already have the chain rasps because they're the same chain rasps as in um, the Soul War Star set. So I can just paint up the, um, the what's it? It's the Stormcast Eternals. I'm ready to rock and roll. So I'm jazzed about that too. And then finally, the thing I'm most excited about is Blitz Ball season two. Uh, it's dwarves versus humans. How cool is that? So you basically get one sprue each from the uh, dwarf and human teams for six players. And you're playing like a light version of Blood Bowl. And of course, as Blood Bowl is the, 
the greatest yelling at a table game <laughs> probably of the last 40 years, uh, I'm pretty jazzed to give it a try. So I'll paint up the uh, the dwarves and the humans, and we'll get ready to rock and roll all three of these games. I'll probably try and do like one a week over the next couple weeks. I might start with Crypt Hunters because obviously it's got uh, it's got the the lowest like well actually Rise of the is five models, it's four models, five models, and then twelve models. So I'll probably save Blitzball for last um, and do either Rise of the Orcs by myself um, and then Crypt Hunters with Owen and then Blitzball will will save for for the end. So you have another on the paint table done and on the books. Ten models painted this week. Lots of different games. Lots of things to try. Lots of things coming. And yeah, I'm back in the swing of things. I've been doing lots of painting and really enjoying it. I blitzed through season two of the Umbrella Academy and the first two episodes of uh, Lovecraft Country. Uh, this this last little painting blitz. And yeah, I got my got my groove back. I was feeling a little burnt out, but taking some time off, of course. That's the, the best medicine is a change as good as a rest. And I'm back in the swing of things playing games and I'm excited for all the stuff coming out this fall. So we'll see you next week for more on the paint table. Till then I'm Ash. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys and of course I will continue doing it as long as I can.